The concept of value or utility that consumers associate with a product is central to marketing and one of the goals of marketing is to understand how much consumers value product attributes. After all, if you want people to buy your product, then you have to offer them attributes or features that they value. Conversely, there's no point building a feature into a product if consumers are indifferent to it or worse, react negatively to it. Conjoint analysis is a research technique that helps managers to understand the amount of value that consumers attach to product attributes. As such, it is a technique that is immensely important in product design and in new product development because it helps managers predict how consumers will react to their new products and how competitive these new products will be in the marketplace. In product design, we need to answer the following questions. How much do my consumers value different product attributes? How can I offer the optimal combination of attributes that will maximize my profits? Let's take a quick overview of conjoint analysis before diving into the details. It is a method that uses regression to analyze preferences. Regression allows us to estimate the relative importance or utility of product attributes and the value added by each level of the attributes. This allows us to understand the trade-offs people make between attributes. For example, in purchasing a car, to what extent would a consumer be willing to trade off fuel economy for luxury? Most importantly, it helps us predict the potential market share of new product offerings. Here's an overview of how we would conduct a conjoint study. We start by selecting three to five attributes for the product or service. These should be determinant attributes, that is, they should be ones that consumers will use in choosing that brand. Remember that an attribute may be important, but if all the existing choices are the same on that attribute, it won't help the consumer to choose one brand over another. So it will not be determinant even if it is important. For example, all smartphones have Bluetooth, so even though it is an important attribute, it is not determinant. That is, it does not determine which phone someone chooses. Ideally, the attributes should be objective in nature. For example, the number of calories instead of healthy, which is a judgment call that may differ from one consumer to another. Next, we select two to four levels for each attribute. A two-level attribute is one in which the attribute is either present or absent, so the levels could typically be yes or no. You can have attributes with three or more levels, such as color and price. The attributes should be feasible, that is, realistic, and they should be unambiguous, that is, not vague or imprecise. In the next step, we create product profiles which are combinations of the attributes using one level from each. It is not necessary or desirable to consider every possible combination of attributes since that will result in a huge number of profiles and be impossible for consumers to evaluate. So we select a subset of profiles using statistical software that will give us enough information to understand what consumers value without overwhelming them with the task. In the last step, we conduct a survey of consumers to show them the profiles and measure their liking for each. Let's take an example using carpet cleaners as a product category. A conjoint analysis study starts by listing attributes of the product category. These are attributes that can affect preference and that the manufacturer can vary. In our case, we are going to list five attributes, pack design, brand name, price, the good housekeeping seal, and a money-back guarantee. Each attribute has a number of levels, that is, options. In our example, pack design has three levels, A, B, and C, which are different shapes of the package. For brand name, there are three possibilities, K2R, Glory, and Bissell. For price as well, there are three options, $1.19, $1.39, and $1.59. For the good housekeeping seal, it can either be present, indicated by the level yes, or absent, indicated by no. Similarly, the money-back guarantee can either be yes or no. So these two attributes have only two levels each. The next step is to create a number of product profiles or combinations of attributes, each representing a potential product design. 
For example, Profile 1 has option A for pack design, K2R for brand, a price of $1.19, no good housekeeping seal, and no guarantee. Profile 2 has pack design A, Glory as the brand name, a $1.39 price, a seal, and a guarantee, and so on. The basic idea is that you select some of the possible profiles and have consumers rank them in order of preference. Notice that if we created every possible profile given all the possible combinations of attributes, that would result in a 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 or 108 profiles. It would be impossible for anyone to rank 108 possible options. So we take a subset of profiles that will yield the most information. These profiles are selected such that the attributes are uncorrelated to each other. They are referred to as orthogonal designs. This approach of taking orthogonal designs is necessary in order to most efficiently measure each attribute's contribution to preference. You don't need to find out by trial and error which designs are orthogonal because statistical software such as SPSS will generate those profiles for you. All you have to do is indicate what the attributes are and how many levels each has. In this example, there are 18 orthogonal profiles as shown in this table. The table shows the specific level of each attribute, level 1, 2 or 3, in each profile. If you calculate correlation coefficients for all the attributes, you'll find a matrix that looks like this, with zero correlation between the attributes. That is what is meant by an orthogonal design. Once you've specified all the profiles you want to test, show them to consumers in the study and ask them to rank the profiles based on their preference. In the final step, we analyze the data one consumer at a time by running a regression. Each profile represents one observation. Preference for the profiles is the dependent variable and the attributes of each profile are the independent variables. Now, keep in mind that because the attributes are not quantitative variables, you have to code them as dummy variables, that is, as zeros and ones. If you recall from our discussion on regression, a categorical variable with n levels requires n minus 1 dummy variables to represent it. So attributes that have three levels, such as pack design, brand, and price, require two dummy variables each. Attributes with two levels require one dummy variable. This table shows three of the attributes and their levels. There are two dummy variables for the first two attributes and one for the third attribute. Each is coded 0 or 1. Attribute levels with all zeros, for example, pack design C, brand Bissell, and no seal, are called baseline levels. When we run the regression, the utilities for the levels are interpreted relative to the baseline level. Let's take a hypothetical example. Suppose the regression coefficients for the pack design dummy variables have the values 5 and minus 5 respectively. Regression coefficients in conjoint analysis are also called part worth utilities. We calculate the utility for each level by multiplying the coefficient for each dummy with the value of the dummy variable and adding it up across all the dummy variables. In this example, level A has values of 1 and 0 for the two dummy variables. Multiplying them with the coefficients 5 and minus 5 gives you a utility of 5. Similarly, for pack design B, the utility is calculated as minus 5, and for C, because the dummy variable values are both 0, the utility is 0. This does not mean that design C has no value to the consumer. The baseline level, 0, 0, will always have utility equal to 0. The utility values only have meaning relative to each other, not in an absolute sense. So in this example, design C has lower value than A, but higher than B. In the next module, we'll run a regression and review the results for this conjoint study.